Hi everyone, I'm Thomas Burfield. I'm a professor in the Mechanical Engineering Department at the University of Louisville. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the science of soap bubbles. Um, so summer right now and blowing bubbles with my kids is one of my favorite summertime activities. So today we're going to learn a little bit about kind of why bubbles form, the shapes that they do, and we'll see if there's some sort of interesting other things that we can do with them. All right. So everybody knows that bubbles form this very nice spherical shape. However, we can't form that shape unless we blow on it a little bit. We have to apply some air pressure to cause the bubble to form. And if we don't apply enough air pressure, the bubble goes back to its original position. Okay, so why does that happen? Um, so as we blow on the, the bubble, it expands a little bit and we're actually stretching that soap film. And when you release that air pressure, if you stop blowing on it, it's going to snap back to its original position, kind of like a spring. So you note that when we take a spring and stretch it, the amount of energy that we put into it tells us how much the spring stretches. Depends on how stiff it is too. Same thing with an elastic cord. If you pull on it and stretch it, it gets longer. If you add additional forces from the side, like our air pressure, it gets larger and longer as well. And when you release that pressure, it goes back to its original length. Okay, so thinking about the case of a, a soap bubble again, uh, the force that's driving this, this sort of behavior is something called surface tension. So as we blow on soap bubble and try to expand it, the surface area is getting larger. And that causes the film, the bubble, to get thinner and be more stretched out. Now, surface tension is what wants to drive it back into its uh, position where the surface area is as small as possible. So when we're thinking about this, you can think about it in terms of energy. Um, energy is the amount of uh, work that we're putting into something to stretch it. Um, there's also something called potential energy. Um, this is something you'll learn in physics when you get to high school. Um, think about like a ball in a valley. If you, if you drop a ball and it rolls down the hill, it finally finds its position at the very bottom of the hill where the total potential energy is, is minimized. So the same sort of thing is happening with a, a soap bubble. Is when you blow on it, it stretches. You're putting energy in by putting air pressure in. When you release that air pressure, it goes down to its position that minimizes the total amount of, of strain energy or potential energy that's stored in that soap bubble. So those are all big terms to kind of explain you know, what's physically going on within those bubbles. What we're going to look at next is, um, can we use that, that concept, the idea of minimizing the amount of area to solve some different types of math problems? So when I say a math problem, I'm really thinking of like a math geometry problem. So this is going to be a problem where we have four points, and we'd like to connect them all with a line. So we'll think about, first of all, having the points equally spaced out. That might be just like the... Um, the corners on a square, such that they're all a distance d apart from each other. Um, what we'd like to do is connect all four of these with a single line, such that that line has the minimum length as possible. Now, like an application of this might be each point represents a city on a map, and we'd like to connect them with a road that's as short as possible. Um, so there's lots of different places or, or reasons why you might want to do something like this. So to think of this, um, our first solution might be um, just using the idea that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So if we just connect all four points with a straight line, we get a total length of this road as being 4D. It's D plus D plus D plus D, all the sides of the square. So that's a good first approximation, um, but you can actually do a little bit better than that. So um, the first thing that you might do is just eliminate one of those sides. So if we go from having four sides of the square to just three sides, then we'd still be connecting all three points and our total path length would get a little bit shorter. So in this case, it would be 3D, just three sides of a square. So that's a, that's a better total path length, but you know, we can think of some 
other lines that might be even better. Um, the next obvious one might be to just do a, an X. So we connect each um, corner by drawing a line straight across and calculate that total path length. In this case, we've got to use either Pythagorean theorem or some trigonometry. Uh, but if you do that, um, we'll find out that we've got a total path length of that X in this case as being something that's close to 2.82 times D. So that's definitely shorter than 3D, which is what we had for the three sides of a square case. Um, so that's, that's pretty good, but you might think, is this actually optimized or not? Um, is there any other shorter path? Um, and there actually is, um, but it's not quite so obvious and it's not something that you can easily draw. So to solve that problem, what we're gonna do is look at having a soap film and looking at a soap film and how it connects these things and minimizes its strain energy to solve for what might be the geometry that gives us the optimized path length. Okay, to use a soap film to actually solve this geometry problem, what I've done is created this special setup where it's two plates of plexiglass that are connected with some metal pins. So I've put four metal pins there. These are the things that are gonna hold the soap film. After we dip this into some soapy water, we see that we get some bubbles, some soap film starting to form between the two plates. So if we get rid of the little bubble that formed in the middle there that had some trapped air, um, you see that we had our first solution where we got three sides of the square connected. However, if we get those films on each side actually connected to each other, um, we get a new shape that forms. This shape is taking that soap film and having one continuous network of film uh, finding the smallest strain energy possible. So it finds this shape which should be slightly shorter than what we had for the case where we had just an X. So if we blow on it a little bit to try to force it into be an X, what you find is that it reconfigures to this same sort of geometry. Um, and if you look at these each time, you'll know that every time you have soap films coming together, we always have three of them and they form this angle of 120 degrees. So this is the optimized geometry for path lengths. It's a series of networks where you have these little vertices with 120 degree angles. So if you blow on this with a straw, we're adding some air pressure. So we're stretching the films. And if we release that, you'll see it reconfigures into an or, you know, a geometry that minimizes once again that total, total path length. So this is sort of a neat way to solve for um, some of these geometry problems. Um, just using nature and minimization to find the path that's small as possible here. All right, so if we took a ruler and actually measured the total length of that soap film, in this case where we've got four equally spaced points trying to be connected, we find that the total path length in this case is gonna be equal to 2.73D. So that's just slightly shorter than the 2.8D that we were thinking about uh, when we had the, the case where it was just an X, where big two lines crossing together. Um, and if you saw, when we try to blow the bubbles such that those vertices came together to form an X, they immediately reconfigured to form a different configuration that has two of those 120 degree vertices. So these soap films are fairly stable. They remain in their minimum energy state um, until you perturb it in some manner. So if we were to add some additional energy or take away one of the soap films, say if we removed one, disconnected one of the pins so that we had just three points that we tried to connect, you'd immediately see the soap film reconfigure itself. And in this case, uh, that vertex where the three films coming from each point meet, that's actually gonna be the geometric centroid of our triangle that those three points form. So we're not limited to the case where we have just four individual points. We can build a new plate, in this case one that has six pins, and find a configuration for a soap film that connects all those six different points. Um, so all we have to do is dunk this plate into some soapy water, establish a soap film between all of them, and 
Now I'll perturb it a little bit here with some air pressure just to make sure that we have one continuous film connecting all those six points. And once that's done, you find that it very quickly finds its minimum energy state. So this is the path right there, that's the short as possible, that connects all those six points. Note, if we perturb it a little bit more by adding some additional air pressure, um, the geometry will change a little bit. But if we went, we measured after it stops moving here, um, the energy associated with this path length is exactly the same as we had for the prior geometry. So adding a little perturbation, a little air pressure to it, you see the film bows out a little bit and stretches, but it always wants to go back to its minimum energy state. So you can do this a couple different times, perturb it in different ways, um, as long as you make sure that they're all connected. Um, again, you'll find that the geometry is such that the, the total path length is, is as small as possible. Again, every time you'll see that these 120 degree angles exist. So you could do this for say all the, the major cities in Kentucky, put them on a map and map out where they are and use a soap film and a new plate to find out the shortest road that would connect all of them. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about surface tension and strain energy and, and how these concepts help affect how bubbles form. Um, if you're interested in solving problems and learning more about math and science, I definitely encourage you to, to learn more about some of these STEAM topics. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your bubbles and the dog days of summer.